you may be tempted to say that worms are boring or slimy, but only one of those things is true. It's easy to overlook the pink spaghetti that covers your driveway after a rainstorm, or feel revulsion at the sight of a leech drinking your blood. But look past the veneer of dirt and mucus, and you'll see the dynamic and dare I say beautiful members of the phylum Annelida, the segmented worms. But how does an animal that mostly stays hidden from view transform death into the ingredients for new life? Why are leeches still used in the medical field? And what the f*** are these guys? We'll answer all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. The annelid family tree is a complicated and messy one, and their taxonomic relationships are still undergoing scrutiny as new molecular data is collected and studied. But instead of going on that journey, we'll stick with the simple classification that's still used in most textbooks. Phylum Annelida and its 22,000 members can be divided into three major groups. Earthworms, leeches, and polychaetes, also called ragworms or bristleworms. They can be found in just about every ecosystem, from old growth forests to freshwater ponds and even coral reefs. The only place it's hard to find worms is in arid deserts where moisture levels are too low for them to survive. Unless you're harvesting spice on planet Arrakis or hunting Kevin Bacon in Perfection Nevada. Sick references, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Worms are generally tube-shaped. Cut one open, though, and you'll find a tube within that tube. And surrounding that tube, are other tubes. Class dismissed. Segmented worms get their name from being segmented. Segmentation is the repetition of body units that contain similar structures. This feature is what allowed annelids to evolve precise muscle control, with each segment able to expand or contract independently. So one segment can stretch while the one next to it contracts. This feature, combined with the rows of small bristles covering their body, allows polychaetes and earthworms to be such effective burrowers. Many polychaetes take it a step further, with long, paddle-shaped bristles that they use to walk or swim. Leeches lack these movable bristles, instead using suction cups on their head and tail to grip surfaces and pull themselves forward like an inchworm from hell. Having a suction cup around their mouth also helps leeches stay attached to their hosts when they're hungry. The front end of an annelid contains all the important stuff, like the brain, heart, stomach, reproductive, and sensory organs. The back half of their body is pretty much just nerves, blood vessels, and the intestine. But which end is which? When you talk to worms as often as I do, it's important to know the difference so that you don't come off as rude. To find the front end of an earthworm, all you need to do is find the clitellum. I will now show you how to find the clitellum. There it is. That wasn't so difficult now, was it, gentlemen? Leeches are a bit trickier, since their clitellum is either reduced or non-existent. So the easiest way to tell the front end of a leech is by picking one up and see which end starts drinking your blood. The sucker on the head is also much smaller than the sucker on the tail, but that isn't nearly as exciting. Polychaete worms are a whole different story. They have a wide range of body forms that vary based on where they live and what they eat. Some are sedentary filter feeders with feathery plumes used to capture microscopic plants and animals. Others use their enlarged bristles, called parapodia, as legs to crawl across the seafloor in search of small crustaceans. And then there's the bobbit worm. The bobbit worm is, um, intense. Imagine a nine foot long bristle worm with a bear trap on its face. Now bury that worm in the seafloor until only the very tip of its antenna poke out. When an unassuming fish swims within range, bam! Worst game of peekaboo ever. Bobbit worm jaws are powerful enough to literally slice a fish in half before dragging the mangled carcass down underground to be devoured. With that image in mind, leeches don't seem all that scary now, do they? About 75% of leeches are hematophagous, or blood eaters, while the remaining 25% are predatory animals that hunt soft-bodied invertebrates, usually other annelids. Blood-sucking leech species aren't as cute and cuddly as some other animals, but as far as parasites go, they're pretty benign. They attach to a host, make a small incision, numb the area so the bite isn't noticed, 
then drink their fill and go on their merry way. Leeches don't spread disease like ticks and mosquitoes do, but their bites can cause excess bleeding due to an anticoagulant in their saliva called hyrudin. The anticoagulant is so effective in maintaining blood flow that medicinal leeches, hyrudo medicinalis, are still used by doctors when reattaching blood vessels during microsurgery. If you want to see me put my money where my blood is, click that link in the top corner. It's fun, I promise. I'm gonna wrap things up here by talking about our good friends, the earthworms. Now if you know me at all, you know how I feel about Detritivores, the unsung heroes of the animal kingdom that eat trash and poop treasure. Anyone with a compost pile can tell you with first-hand experience how effectively a gang of earthworms can transform a pile of rotting leaves into a mound of fertile soil, and the same process takes place in forests, grasslands, and wetlands worldwide. As earthworms burrow through the topsoil, they consume decomposing plant matter along with the fungi and microbes that live amongst it. In their wake, they leave behind tunnels lined with their mucus and feces. This not only recycles nutrients back into the environment, it also aerates the soil to provide roots with more oxygen. There's a marked difference between dirt and soil that isn't talked about nearly enough. This is dirt. Dirt is lighter in color, it doesn't contain many nutrients, it doesn't hold water, and it provides poor aeration. This is soil. It's packed with nitrogen, phosphorus, minerals, and microbes that plants need to survive. It also retains its shape very well and holds a ton of moisture. Dirt is dead. Soil is alive. And it's all thanks to the phylum Annelida. Next week, it's clickbait time, baby. We're gonna keep it nice and classy and family friendly when we meet the phylum Priapulida better known as, and I am not joking, the penis worms. I have returned to establish my brand. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.